Okay. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot to get you guys to you know, temper down a little bit. Maybe it's the new year. But well, it's great to see you all this morning in 2015. Good to be in the land of the living. <laughs> I'm going to open our service this morning reading from, um, actually reading Psalm 100. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm 100 says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. How many of you have found the Lord to be good? Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand with me this morning and let's, as we come into his courts, come in with praise and worship and glorify his name. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. And oh God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that we are counted as your people, Jesus, and that you are our God, and we acknowledge you this morning. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Worship him as we sing, he has made me glad. Jesus. Worship him as we sing, I see a crimson stream of blood.
your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I know that um, most of us like one another. <clears throat> and I know that most of you are social folks in this room. And uh, part of why we come here is to see each other. But mainly why we come here is to be in the presence of God and, and to hear his word. And uh, if you don't feel him, you can be assured by his word that he's here. As he says where two or three gather his name, he's in the midst. Worship him this morning as we sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father, for your presence in this place, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. And we lift your name on high, Jesus. There's no God beside thee, Lord. We exalt you this morning, King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to your wonderful name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Worship this morning as we sing just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then I
you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for being attentive to our prayers, Jesus. We thank you for hearing your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And that's exactly what we're about to do. Just have a little talk with Jesus. You know, you don't have to complicate prayer. You really don't. You know, you can talk to God just like you talk. You know, you don't have to talk in the King James language. <laughs> you know, thou greatest of them all. You know, <laughs> you, you, you just talk to God. Really, he hears you. You know, you, you really don't. And, uh, you know, I've been some places and even here with, I mean, folks get all, you know, got to be a certain formula. It's got to, you know, it's really not. Just have a talk with Jesus. You know, and you would be amazed that the God of the universe actually listens to you. That, that, I know I say that a lot because it really blows my mind a lot. But, you know, you think with all, going, all that's going on in the world, God's pretty busy. <laughs> you know, there's big, ginormous things going on in the world. But yet God still pays attention to each and every one of us. When you're the only one up in the midnight hour, you know, going through whatever you're going through and you turn your focus to him and talk to him, God is listening. He hears us. And uh, you can have faith that God is moving. He's working things out. On a, oh, that made me think of an old Shirley Caesar song. I know that song. God's working it out. You should Google that. It's a good one anyway. <laughs> I, I won't sing it for you. I won't mortify you this morning. <laughs> I've got this cold and I'm barely made it through song service already, but it's an awesome song. He's working it out for you. And uh, who has a need this morning? Yeah, we have lots of needs. And a great big God that's up to the task. We're going to continue to pray for those that we've been praying for. Sister Teresa's here this morning and, and Jamie, I don't know if she's here or not. And, uh, Sister um, Janice and Amy. Amy called in this morning. I mean, work mode. <laughs> Amy called to say that she's not feeling well this morning, so remember to pray for her. Um, Mary Bell's in the midst of healing, so continue to pray for her. Complete healing. That that will get all well. And uh, who, are you, who in here are praying for their children? Let me see if I have enough things to raise. Right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if I didn't have this, I, I could raise everything. Um, have confidence. God is going to work things out. I, my old boss used to have a saying that says, God doesn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> and you think about things like, yeah, that's right, right? Yeah. What God did in your life, he can do in theirs. And he knows how to get to each and every one of us. He really does. So, I, I don't know, that was on my heart this morning. I, I pray for Tina until I'm blue in the face, and y'all know I pray for money. Right? <laughs> and, uh, but for our young people and for all of our children. Continue to pray for them. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to what God's going to do. Some of you in here were, I'll put it lightly, uh, on when you were young. Some of you in here, nobody ever thought you would probably be serving the Lord this day and time. You know, had they known you when you were, you know, 15, 16, 17. But here you are. Here you are. And so pray in faith. Uh, lift, lift those hands again. And look around this room and agree with somebody. You know, you can just describe that person to God. Agree with them in prayer as we take our needs to him this morning. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your midst, oh God. And for this privilege of bringing our needs to you, Jesus. God, we ask that you would touch those who need healing in their bodies, oh God. The lonely, Jesus. Be with them, Father, for you're the ultimate comforter, Jesus. And oh God, be with our children, oh God. Intervene in their lives in a mighty way, Jesus. Do what only you can do, God. Save them, Lord Jesus. Grab them into your kingdom, O oh God. And do your mighty work in this place today, Jesus. You saw those hands lifted, Jesus, and you know what each and every need signifies. God, move upon them, O oh God. O oh God, according to your perfect wisdom, to your perfect knowledge, and for your plan for each of us, Jesus, move upon those needs, Jesus. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you take a moment and uh, greet someone, and especially those who, whose faces don't look familiar to you. Make sure you make them feel welcome this morning.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 2015. We're glad you have chosen to spend the first Sunday with us. And uh, it's good to see so many faces. I'm glad that you are here because I know that sickness is all about. Everybody's heard that the flu, all those shots. How many of you got the flu shot? My condolences. Y'all heard it's useless, right? I agree. <laughs> uh, I meant to get it and somehow forgot to. Now I'm glad I didn't because it's pointless. I did have a little science lesson with my wife yesterday. I said, okay, so how's this really work? And basically, the flu, it's a virus, it's always um, adapting. In other words, it's ever fighting us. It's constantly adapting to what we do to try to press on it. And so what happens is, is scientifically, we are able to figure out or predict some of its patterns most of the time. And that's how they create the flu vaccine or the flu, the, the flu shot for you. Well, it did a left turn when we thought it was going to do a right turn. The doctor said if you got one in 97 or 98. Yes, if you got one in 97 or 98, it pulled out its 97, 98 playbook. So if you got one in 97 or 98 and or, and or got the flu, then you, uh, you may be doing all right. I don't know if I got the flu in 97 or 98. I'm praying I did. Anyway, so uh, lots of folks that are sick, so continue to pray for them and lift them up. January begins with a bang. We are an active, if you haven't picked up the new January, February schedule, I encourage you to do so. There's a lot going on. And, of course, our weekly schedule is about to uh, pick up, and I want to talk to you real quick about that. But first of all, we are in the beginning of our 30 days of prayer and fasting. I want to share with you an interesting uh, conversation that was held at my dinner table. I was informed by one of my children, who is male and short, <laughs> not to name any names, He's also kind of cute, in my opinion, but um, he, he basically said that he was miserable in his fast, and he prayed that the fast would be true to its name and pass fast. <laughs> Something along those lines. That's not his exact words, and I'm sure he's wanting to correct me right now of exactly what he said, but it was, it was to that gist. And one of his brothers said, well, then it's working. Because if you are getting the attention that you don't like what you're refraining from. That's the point of the fast. So continue, persevere. And uh, if you've adapted already, change up on it. Fast something else. Get something that, that just gets your attention. I was having some fun with Sarah. I think it was it yesterday, yes. Talking to Sarah because she's having a hard time figuring out what to fast. So I said, well, Sarah, what is something that if I took it away, you'd be mad? And she had the gall to actually think that I was going to believe her when she said, nothing. <laughs> Not buying it. Every human's got something that if you took it away, we'd get mad. And that's the point of the fast. So I'm looking forward to good things. And if you haven't joined us in fasting, we started January 2nd. But if you haven't joined us, jump in. 28 is better than 30. Or, excuse me, 28 is better than nothing. 30, obviously, is the best, but 28 is better than nothing. And uh, so join us in the prayer and fasting, and then we will end that with communion on, on Sunday, February 1st. And so um, let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord talk to you, not just about you talking to him, but give him the opportunity to speak into your life as well. Amen. Discipleship classes. This is the last Sunday you can sign up for those. And we have a full array of those, both a new life and a growing life. That's level one and level two are on Wednesday nights, running concurrent with adult Bible study. And then a maturing life, which is level three. We have a Tuesday morning slot for that, 11 a.m., and then also Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. All right, so that is fairly typical, not abnormal. If you're new with us, um, listen a little bit further before you sign up for those classes because... 
We are adding another element in that will be great. If you're brand new with us and you've never been through a survey of the Bible, okay? Um, the discipleship classes take topics and they drill down. They get very specific and they drill down in that particular topic. A survey Bible study does the exact opposite. It's not drilling down, but it takes from the beginning, from Genesis all the way through uh, to the end, to Revelation, and we survey. So it doesn't mean we cover every, every detail. It doesn't mean we even cover it in great depth. But we give you a survey of the Bible, and that way as you're reading the Bible, which is an excellent thing to do, it's something that's very important in the life of a Christian, as you're reading it, you have some context and you have some ways to understand how it all interconnects. So there are two standing, and this is going to be for the foreseeable future, there will be two standing survey Bible studies occurring each week. If you aren't able to make those and you want a survey Bible study, see Sister Leela and we'll hook you up with somebody else that can teach on your schedule. But Tuesday night at 7.30, same time as there's a Maturing Life Discipleship class, I will be here available to teach. On Thursday night, Sister Leela will be here available to teach. Now, don't pick based on who's teaching, but you do know which one's better looking. So um, I'll expect to see you all on Tuesday, right? <laughs> see that whole expected right went left thing? All right. Um, no, seriously. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, both of those nights, 730 here at the church. Okay. And uh, so as you're witnessing church, as you are bearing witness to the gospel, and you run into somebody, we are going to run them on the 10 weeks of each term of the discipleship classes. So say you're week three in, week four, week five, week six, doesn't matter, and you're witnessing somebody, and you don't feel comfortable teaching them a Bible study. Get them and bring them to one of those Bible studies. Okay? So this is another tool, resource available to you as you bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bring them to that Bible study, and we will work with them, minister to them, and uh, if you're new with us and have never gone through a survey Bible study, I would highly recommend that you, um, that you do that. You can jump into the discipleship class, level one, and it will not hurt you. But it also would not hurt you to start with a survey Bible study. You say, well, I don't want to miss the discipleship classes. You won't. We will always offer every one of these classes every single term. And we run three terms a year, one in the fall for 10 weeks, one in the winter for 10 weeks, one in the spring for 10 weeks, then we take two months off for the summer, and then we're back in at the fall again, okay? So you will never miss a discipleship class. So all of that starts this week, all right? So if you've signed up, your sign-up sheets are still on the board there. I cleaned them up a little bit, typed them out for you, but you can see where you signed up for. And uh, those of you that have adjusted to, to incorporate the survey Bible study, I've taken your names off. We've got good communication around here. All of that is adjusted. And uh, so make yourself available. One other thing, too, is if you get in the habit of coming on Thursday night, something happens to your schedule, and you need to make a Tuesday night as far as the survey of Bible study, just simply communicate to us that, that, that you're going to do that, and we will adjust, because then I can simply find out from Sister Leela where she's at within that Thursday Bible study, and I will adjust to incorporate those of you that are coming to the Tuesday night one. All right? So maximum flexibility. Make this a priority and part of your life. Rest of the schedule you can take a look at. You can see all the elements that are involved there. But um, all of our regular services are in place, and so we're ready for a new year. And we're glad that you're a part of us. You're, we're glad that you're here. And uh, there's a few of you that we haven't seen in a while, and it's good to see you back. I told one of you that you better quit skipping church as much as you did, or we're going to send out somebody. I forget what Lil, oh, Lil said. She was going to show up on their doorstep. That's right. So uh, they know who I'm talking about. I'm teasing them a little bit right now. But it's good to see all of you. Glad that you're in the house of the Lord. Ushers, if you would come. <clears throat> to our first-time guests, thank you for being here. I know there are several of you that are here. And uh, if you haven't already seen it in your visitor's packet, we would love for you to join us in our reception room following service so that we can get to know you a little bit better and you get to know us a little bit better. It's one thing to hear me preach, another thing to hear Sister Leela lead in worship and so forth, but we'd like to greet you personally and um, talk to you a little bit, not hardcore. We're not trying to sell you anything. This isn't a timeshare or anything like that. We're not going to do any hard sales or anything. We just want to share 
a little bit of refreshments with you and just get to know you personally, welcome you to our midst. And so we're very, very happy that you are here. Please consider uh, following the service, joining us there. You can go directly to the reception room and uh, we will be happy to host you there and greet you there. Amen, amen. Would you stand in preparation to give? Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us. Lord, we come into a new year with hope, with excitement about what you are about to do. And we ask that you would bless our giving, God, that you would give us wisdom as a church to use it for your kingdom and for your purposes. And we pray it in Jesus' name. And with the church say amen. amen. him together jesus i praise your name thank you lord hallelujah 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 praise the name of jesus praise the name of jesus hallelujah 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 praise god praise god hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated in the middle of the night i can't even tell you when it was because it was literally in the middle of my sleep i was probably coming out of my sleep knowing the day was about to dawn and you got to understand that in the middle of the night when I sleep I sleep when I'm awake I'm awake and when I'm asleep I'm asleep 
and uh, most mornings I have to wait a few seconds to figure out when is, what, what day is it, what, what's, what's even on the docket. And uh, so somehow, I don't know whether in my spirit or my subconscious or that, my spirit was focused upon this day and upon this service. And somewhere in the middle of that sleep, I had the oddest title come to my head. Now trust me, when I'm in the middle of my sleep, to have this title come to my head is just an odd thing, and that's why I share it with you. But I just kept having come at me the efficacy of the cross. The efficacy of the cross. Now, I'm, you got to understand something. I'm asleep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not up fasting and praying. Me and the Lord talk in the morning. At the beginning of the morning. Not the middle of the morning. Some of you think 6 a.m. is the beginning of the morning. No, it's not. It's midnight. That's when the morning starts. And uh, the new day dawns, and that's when the Lord and I talk. I don't talk to the Lord at 6 a.m. I'm, I'm asleep at 6 a.m. Well, somewhere in that hour, this started pounding into my spirit. I want to share with you the definition of the word efficacy. If you don't know it, it is interesting, the definition. You can just do a simple Google define efficacy. Here's what it says. The ability to produce a desired or intended result. Efficacy is the ability to produce either a desired or an intended. Desired would be us, intended would be him. Efficacy is the ability to produce a desired or intended result. And so with that definition in mind, I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, excuse me, yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 16. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and the first part of this verse is actually not the focus, uh, but it's the context in which Paul introduces the cross. He says, for Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. Think efficacy. The ability to produce the desired or intended result. So the Apostle Paul says, I did not come to preach the good news, which is what is my responsibility with clever speech because if I come with clever speech that can cause the cross of Christ to lose its power the message of the cross so Paul is going on to define this good news that is his responsibility to preach as the message of the cross the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction it sounds inefficacious it sounds ineffective you're telling me that my problems are going to be solved by a Jew 2,000 years ago being hung by Romans on a piece of wood you're telling me seriously the Apostle Paul, who was much closer to the time of Jesus' death, he said the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is. What is it? The message of the cross. It is the very power. Again, think efficacy. The ability to produce the desired or intended results. It is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? And what's very funny about me, about this passage is, who's writing this? A Jewish thinker, scholar, and brilliant debater. God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. 
since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. That's why the Apostle Paul struggled, because as Saul, he knew the scriptures, and he looked at Jesus, who hung where? Upon a cross, who hung as a criminal, who was hung by the Romans, and he looked at it, and he said, that cannot be the Mashiach. That cannot be the anointed one of God. That cannot be the Messiah. It cannot be. You see, in his wisdom, God saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. He instead has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven. And it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, notice he has not left the cross. Every time he keeps coming back to Christ, it is not Christ separate from the cross. It is Christ hung upon the cross. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God. See, you cannot preach about a foolish plan with slick words. The content of your preaching determines what kind of preaching it is. And the content is from human standards, what we preach to you is foolishness. All the way to the sense of being dismissed or in fact being offensive. This foolish plan of God, Apostle Paul says, is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness, you can't get much more weak than being pinned impaled upon a tree. God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things that the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world. You can't get much more despised than a cross. Things counted as nothing at all and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. First point, the efficacy of the cross, the ability to produce the desired or intended result. The result that is desired by us and intended by God is for us to be made right with God and to be made pure and holy and free from sin. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad it's been. And I don't care how much you owe society for it. The efficacy of the cross stands as a beacon of hope this morning. God can make you right with himself. He can make you pure. He can make you holy. And he can release you from sin. Now, preacher, how is it that a man, a little-known man, that barely hit the pages of history in his day, impaled upon a cross by a, a Roman army that didn't want to be in the backwaters of a place called Palestine, how is it that his death, his impaling, his crucifixion, how is it that that can make me holy? That can make me pure. That can set me free from sin. And that can make me right with God. Preacher, that makes no sense. I agree. It does not make sense. It seems ineffective. And yet, in the midst of what we humanly would deem ineffective, stands God saying this is effective.
this cross, it's not simply a symbol. It was a real place. It was a real occurrence. There was real blood, real nails, real flesh, real pain, real death. Well, then how, how does that set me free? How does that make me right with God? How does that make me holy or pure? How does that remove my sins? You see, before you move to your response, you must first believe. What am I going to believe? You've got to believe that God really did something that looks foolish, that looks weak, that looks ineffective. God really did something when he descended to earth in human form and he died on a cross. The reason the Apostle Paul put such a focus upon this is because of, as I've already alluded to, for the Apostle Paul, this was the sticky point. An oppressed Jew, that's fine. A misunderstood Jew, that's fine too. A rabbi, that works. One who can teach, great. One who can perform miracles, awesome. But as soon as he was hung upon a tree, the Apostle Paul says, this one cannot be the one. This cannot be God's plan. He's told us within his scriptures that cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. But therein lies the efficacy of the cross. For your ignorance and your impurity and your unholiness and your sin is what places you in the crosshairs of the curse of God. So in return, God in his wisdom that looks like foolishness, God in his power that looks like weakness said, I will come and I will step between them and myself. I will step into those crosshairs and I will there take upon myself the curse of their unholiness. I will take upon myself the curse of their unrighteousness. I will take upon myself the curse of their sin. And in exchange by me taking that curse, they can be set free. They can be made holy. They can be made pure. And I can come back from the dead, whereas they cannot. This is sheer power cloaked in utter foolishness. There is no, we, we like to talk about Mount Sinai. We like to talk about the Red Sea. We like to talk about Joshua and under the power of God stopping the sun and the moon. I'm here this morning to tell you that the most powerful moment in all of time was not when God spoke light into existence. It's not when God spoke the heavens into his existence. It's when God descended to earth, took upon him the humanity of Jesus Christ and walked to a cross and laid himself down upon that cross and was lifted into the sky between heaven and earth and there in the utter foolishness and shame of a crucifixion God exercised ultimate power because he broke the back of sin and he didn't just do it in general but he broke the back of your sin he broke the back of your unholiness he broke the back of your unrighteousness and he brought to you the ability to be made right with him because of the power of God cloaked in the midst of foolishness if you can't believe that message, I have nothing for you. You need to ignore anything about repentance because repentance doesn't work without the efficacy of the cross. You need to ignore anything about baptism because baptism doesn't work without the efficacy of the cross. You need to ignore anything about the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the power of God brought to you by it because that doesn't work without the efficacy of the cross. You need to ignore anything about being holy and righteous and walking as a disciple of Christ because none of that works without the efficacy of the cross. The ability to produce the desired or intended result. It resides not in your repentance. It resides not in baptism. It resides not in the Holy Spirit. And it resides not in a holy life. Those are all results produced by the efficacy of the cross.
Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19. Paul writes and he says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of, by the power of, by the efficacy of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You need to hear me this morning. I don't care how far you find yourself. You are sitting in proximity to the efficacy of the cross. I don't care how bad you've been this week. I don't care what you've done. I'm sorry that you are dealing with the repercussions of your sin. But when you are sitting within striking distance of the efficacy of the cross, your focus has got to get off your sin. Your focus has got to get off your unholiness. Your focus has got to get off your unrighteousness. And you've got to turn your eyes towards Jesus. You've got to look Look at that which looks foolish and yet is the very power of God unto salvation. It is the efficacy of the cross. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. Now look at this. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. I understand that right now you're in the middle of seeing your faults. I understand that we're in the middle of an imperfect world. I understand that we're living in a world where we still feel unholy and we still feel unrighteous and we still feel guilty of our sins. But you got to understand that by faith, the Apostle Paul says, when you understand the efficacy of the cross, you get an appreciation and an understanding that God has already done something that has not even fully come to pass in your reality God has already brought to reality in his world what is only now coming to reality in your world he's made you right with him so that you now stand in his presence and you're holy and you're blameless and you are without a single fault this is the efficacy of the cross this is the power of God unto salvation this is why you can believe and based upon believing then you repent of your sins then you're baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ then you lift your hands and receive his spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues then you pursue holiness in life and living in action and thought all because of the efficacy of the cross It's foolish. It makes no sense. And yet, God in his wisdom said, oh no, I'm not going to use the predictable. I'm not going to use the understandable. I'm not going to exercise authority the way humans exercise authority. No, I'm going to come as a servant. I who have begun and will end all of life, I will submit to being born into that life. And I will go to the greatest symbol that humanity has probably ever seen for torture, pain, and death. It's just a new appreciation. Forgive me for a little digression here. Jesus is standing there. He's a, not a very good looking Jew, the scriptures tell us. He wasn't a standout. He wasn't distinct. You know, there's people walk in the room and they grab your attention immediately. It wasn't Jesus. Jesus would have been there for 30 minutes. You wouldn't even know he'd been there. He's beaten. His back is flayed. He's probably moving in and out of a consciousness. He is the epitome of weakness. Crown of thorns is upon his head and a sarcastic purple robe is flung over his back. And there he stands in front of the governor who stands as representative of the emperor who claims to be the Lord of all the heavens and the earth. 
Pontius Pilate says, don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I have the power to set you free and I have the power to snuff your life out? And Jesus, in the midst of this absolute haze of pain and and torture that he's already undergone and knowing where he's going and all of the spiritual going on he he looks up and I imagine that somehow through that fog there's a little clarity that comes to his eye a little gleam that comes out of his eye a little bit of the divine that flashes out and says oh you don't understand sir no man takes my life even in this beaten subjugated foolish looking state i'm still in control you will not take my life and when i lay it down i'll pick it up again when i want to because i am god and i'm here to reconcile everything to me no man takes my life i lay it down and i pick it up again that's why i looked at his disciples and says don't worry yeah i'm gonna die But three days later, I'm going to rise again. That's sheer foolishness too. Who do you know that raises himself or herself from the dead? I've never met a single person who has the capacity to. This is the gospel. This is the message of the cross. And the efficacy, the ability to produce the desired or intended result. The efficacy of the cross is the bedrock of the gospel we preach. Your sin stacked up against the cross cannot win. Your imperfection stacked up against the cross cannot win. Your inability to be obedient stacked up against the efficacy of the cross cannot win. There is nothing that can win against the efficacy of the cross. Now the simple question is, do you believe? It's that simple. Do you believe? Believe is not a statement. It's an action. That's why if you believe, you will repent of your sins. If you believe, you will be baptized in Jesus' name. If you believe, you will raise your hands and say, God, fill me with your spirit. If you believe, you will pursue holiness and righteousness in your lifestyle. If you believe. But the starting place is not all of those actions. They are the results of true belief. Do you believe, though you cannot explain it? Though you cannot understand it? Though it seems foolish and perhaps even offensive? that God descended to earth because he loved you and he went to a cross and he laid his body down there and he died for you in sheer power to save you. If you do, then you are already on the path for God making you right with himself. And if you don't, you can cry all you want in my altars. Nothing will change. You can go down in the waters of baptism all you want. Nothing will change. You can ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost all day long. Nothing's going to change. You can even get good at living holy and righteous by human standards, and nothing will change. You have to come face to face with the efficacy of the cross. One side note, and then these altars are open. That is why, church, when you fail or when you realize how absolutely evil your heart is. That's why you don't give up. That's why you show back up on a Sunday morning. That's why you repent again. That's why you refuse to quit. Because you believe in the efficacy of the cross. It is always more effective than anything we're facing. Does anybody believe this morning? These altars are open. Would you come and pray? If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, after you spend a little time making sure you believe, tap your neighbor and say, it's time for me to get baptized. 
if you've been baptized before and you're not sure whether it was in the name of Jesus, I mean absolutely, positively sure. I'm telling you, you need to tap your neighbor and say, I need that preacher to rebaptize me. There is scripture for people being rebaptized. The disciples of John in Acts 19 got rebaptized. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are struggling about your worthiness to receive the Holy Spirit, you need to get your eyes on the efficacy of the cross and realize you can be filled with His Spirit, not because you are worthy of it, but because God is able to do it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, be in prayer with me right now. Come on, let's create an environment. It's not about your volume, but it's about your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I praise you and I worship you, Lord. I received Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I worship you. God, I praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I worship you and I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sight and now i'm happy all the day was it for crimes that i have done he groaned upon that tree Amazing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Unknown God, we receive your love. God, we receive your forgiveness. Yes, we believe you, Lord. Hallelujah, you are efficacious through the cross. God, you have the ability, almighty God, to do the impossible. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Break through our fears. Break through, Lord, our despondency. Break through our bullheadedness, oh God. Break through our willfulness, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, and let the efficacy of the cross Come through and do it our lives. Chalala hasheti ala 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 haseti. Yalala ala ala haseti kiri ala 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 haseti ki. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. And it was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day But drops of grief can never repay The debt of love I owe Here, Lord, I give myself away Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. 
It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. On the hill. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has won fraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary oh so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown oh so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross Change it someday for a crown. Oh, in the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine. I receive you, Lord. God, I accept and believe you, Almighty God. I see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord was on. God, you can overcome everything if we will only believe you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Jesus in your name the old rugged cross till my trophy that last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown I will cherish till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. For a crown, I will cherish the old Hallelujah, Jesus. Cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All across this congregation, would you lift your hands to him and worship? I lay down. Would you lift your hands to him and worship? Would you provide an environment where God can continue to do what he's doing in our midst? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus in your name, Lord. Come on, church. I need you to worship some. Come on, I need you to lift your voices to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you to worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Provide an environment where people can respond to the word. That's it. Come on, press a little bit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, press a little bit. Jesus, I worship you. Yes, Jesus, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do the impossible, almighty God. Break the barriers now, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you. I praise you and I worship you, almighty God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I worship you. God, I praise your name. God, I worship you. Almighty God, I worship you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church, press with me just a little bit. Hallelujah. When we press through past our flesh and into the presence of Almighty God, things can happen spiritually. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. We're on the cusp of it. You can feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I worship you and I praise you. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an old hymn that's so powerful. And in that chorus, there's a statement, I will cling to the old rugged cross. You see, I believe the reason the Apostle Paul could write with such powerful words is because he daily struggled with the effects of his sinful, unholy, unrighteous choices. The visions of those people that he had persecuted. The vision of Stephen as rain, raining down upon him. Stones came and bloodied him and battered him and killed him. Wherever before the Apostle Paul. That's why he could look at those heathen Gentiles. Who from his Jewish sensibilities were so far from the grace and the mercy of God. And he could say to them, oh no. God has already rendered you holy. God has already rendered you righteous. God has already reconciled you to himself and has made you blameless and free from your sin because the Apostle Paul, Jew of Jews that he was, Pharisee of Pharisees that he was, impeccable with regarding the law, he needed that same cross. The very thing he had rejected, the very thing he'd said, it can't be true, the very thing that said, this is offensive, when he faced his own sin, when he faced his own reality, suddenly he found the efficaciousness of the cross. I will cling to the old rugged cross. There are days that the only way that I get up is I cling to the old rugged cross. There are days that the only way I'm able to make life make sense is I cling to the old rugged cross. The only way that I can make sense of the battle that I'm in the middle of is I cling to that old rugged cross. That place of shame and degradation. And yet in that foolishness, the ultimate expression of the power and love of my Savior. I cling to that old rugged cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Jesus, I receive your word. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I receive your word, almighty God. I receive your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I don't want to belabor this service, but I, I just... Maybe I want. I was getting ready to say I feel, but I don't even know that God's in it. It's just kind of me, maybe. But God might be in it. I, I, I want us to sing in closing on page 252, the old rugged cross. I just want to cement it into our heads. This is the bedrock, church. This is where all the power flows out of. This most ignoble and shameful place where God demonstrated his power. Did you guys find it yet? Just go to songs. There we go. Forgive my voice, but I'm going to lead you.
Oh, till my trophies. At last I lay down. Lay down. And I, I will, will cling, cling to the old rugged, rugged cross. cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. It shame approach gladly, gladly, bear. gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share and so I'll cherish the old rugged Yes, hallelujah, till my trophies at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have faith in the cross. Hallelujah. Have faith in the cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of what we do. Hey, Jim, you just heard the choir. It sounded pretty good, too. You are important to what we do here. Every service, whether you're in need or you're giving or a mixture, you're important to what we do here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to Ella. Happy birthday to Sister Debbie. One's young, one's not so young. One's dumb and learning, one's wise and still learning. Amen. To our guests, thank you for being here. If you're a first time visitor with us, please, if you would, join us in our reception room. God bless you all. We'll see you again tonight, Lord willing.